Tackle Junkies, what's going on, fellas? Really appreciate you guys clicking on the video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, definitely subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell, the way you guys get notified every time I pump out a new video. Today we're going to discuss a few wintertime techniques that can also be used throughout the season, as well as what rods I would toss them on. Stay tuned. All right guys, here's the deal. I'm here in the Midwest, fishing is not that great. We did just thaw, we did have some warm days here recently, but I'm sure it'll freeze again in the matter of a few weeks or so. There is more cold weather around the corner. Um, that being said, I, I'm not going to be doing any fishing anytime soon, but what I wanted to do is go over the baits in my MTB box and talk about what rod that I would use for each style of bait. So again, this doesn't have to really pertain to a bait in this box. Let's say, you know, we're talking about a mid-depth diver here. You can apply what I'm going to tell you to whatever diver that you're using. Same with a soft plastic crawl, jerk bait, whatever. Again, we're just going to go over the equipment that I would use for these baits. Again, you can apply that to the baits that you use as well. I'm getting a lot of questions here recently on what rod I would use for certain baits. So I kind of came up with the idea to do this with these boxes until I can go out and fish with them and actually catch fish. So again, there's different baits that come in the boxes each month. So we'll just go through what rods I would use for each bait in the box the next few months until we get into better fishing weather. If you guys haven't tried out Mystery Tackle Box yet, now is a great time to do it. You guys can use my code TJ81 to get your first box for as little as five bucks. You get a link down in the description. It's a great way to try out new baits, possibly come across your new favorite. Again, it just kind of gets you out of your comfort zone, allowing you to try new baits, new techniques that you may normally not even try or think about. So anyways, check it out. Link down in the description. We'll just run through the baits here real fast. Again, we'll go through what rods I would use for each bait. Let's go and get out the card here so we know exactly what we're talking about. Okay, I'm going to throw it up here on the screen. You guys can pause that to see the prices and the baits. Okay, so we're gonna grab a couple baits out of the box here. We're gonna go with the worms. We got the Wright Baits Probe and the Guggen Baits Drag and Drop, both finesse worms. And the first thing that's going to come to mind looking at both of these worms here is going to be finesse, obviously. Drop shot, shaky head, even a little Nico rig, wacky rig possibly here with the probe, um, split shot rig. Be honest, guys, when I think of a finesse worm, the first thing I think of is a trailer on a chatterbait. And I know that sounds crazy to some of you guys, but do yourself a favor. Pick up a little finesse worm, any one that you have around. 4.5 plasma tail is one of my favorites. Put that on the back of a chatterbait, and I'll tell you what, man, you're going to dig it. It's that little tail to span, it starts going crazy, especially the plasma tail, but I'd imagine these would work just as good as well. But any finesse worm you got at the house, just give it a shot. Put it on the back of a chatterbait, and you're going to dig it, no doubt. But again, I would definitely try these as a trailer, but um, obviously they would be more suited for you know any finesse presentation that I mentioned earlier. Again, drop shot, shaky head, something like that. But we're talking spinning gear, light line. All right, we got a couple of rods here. Both Akuma rods. This one here is the EVX. Okay, 7 foot 1, medium power, fast action rod, line rating, 6 to 12 pound test, lure rating, a 16th to a half ounce. Okay, and you need to stay within those specs. All right, let's talk about the lure rating. Okay, 16th is minimum, half is the max. Okay, so if you put a three quarter on this rod, you load it up on the back cast and come forward, okay, good chance you'll snap that tip off because it's too much weight. Okay, that's what that rating means there. So stay within the rating. Now the minimum, it's more critical on a bait caster not as much on a spinning uh, spinning setup here. Again, 16th is the minimum. Let's say it was rated a quarter to a half. So if you put a 16th on it and it was rated a quarter, again, there's not that much weight to load the tip, so you won't get that far of a cast. Now with a bait caster, that's a backlash. Again, spinning gear, you're just not going to get that much distance. Okay, but again, you, still, you just want to stay within the specs to get the most performance out of the rod. You know, the line rating, 6 to 12 pound test, Again, that's really just to um, keep you from breaking fish off, okay? So six to 12 pound test, if you put like two or four pound test on this, the rod is just too stiff 
for that pound test. So if your drag is not smooth enough, again, you could break fish off. Let's say, you know, it says rated the 12 pound test at max. Let's say you put 17 pound test on here and you got your drag locked. Say you're using braid, something like that. You feel a bite, you set the hook. And let's say you think it was a fish, but maybe it was a snag and you set it pretty hard. Well, with that line being much stronger than what the rod rates, okay, that could break your tip off as well. Okay, so normally you want the line to break before the rod. So again, that's why you want to stay within those specs. But again, that's what those stand for right there. But this right here is a good all around rod for really any finesse, you know, technique here. I got another one here in the SX lineup. Again, this one is a medium as well. Seven foot two medium power fast action rod. The line rating is a little bit um, larger on this rod, eight to 17 pound test. And again, eight to five eight as far as the lure rating goes. A little bit different though, but for the most part, good all around rod. Just pay attention to the specs when you're choosing a rod, figure out what you want to do, and then you can decide you know, which rod is best for you. So if you like lighter stuff, you may want to go to a medium or a medium light. But again, it really does depend on the rod company itself, just because I have a medium heavies that load in an eighth as well. So again, just pay attention to the specs, maybe the power that you may need. You may need more power in some situations if you're around brush piles and things like that. Open water, you don't need the backbone. So again, just pay attention to what you want to do, you know, with the rod as far as techniques goes and where you're fishing around um, so you can choose the right rod for each situation. Okay, next up, let's grab a couple hard baits in here. Looks like we got one from Vexen somewhere in here. One from Vexen here and then one from Bomber. Okay, I'd imagine both go around eight to 10 foot or so, again, which is great in the colder months, fish go a little bit deeper. Summertime, again, these can be used all year long. Me personally, fishing muddy water, majority of the time, I'm fishing something pretty shallow just because those fish stay shallow. But again, depending where you're at, this is a bait that you could use pretty much all season long. But we have the, the Vexen Deep Thud series, and of course the Bomber Fat A. You guys know I love the Bomber Square A, and that's the Fat A right there. Okay, we got one of my cranking setups right here. Now, one of the most important things when choosing a crankbait is going to be length in my mind. Majority of them are going to have that softer action, again, which acts like a delay, which really just helps the fish get the bait, helps you fight the fish and get the fish to the boat versus having a faster action where the hooks could tear out much easier, the rod unloads much faster, which again can cause the hooks to tear out when it loads back up. That softer rod just stays loaded and keeps the fish pinned much better versus a faster action. But again, you want that softer action rod, but when it comes to depth, okay, these here are probably eight to 10 foot, I'd imagine. Uh, yeah, eight to 10 foot here. So with a bait diving that depth, you can get away with a seven footer, seven two, seven three. But when you're talking, you know, 16, 18, 20 foot plus, you gotta have a long enough rod to get that cast, to get that lure down to max depth. So again, length plays a huge role in deep diving, but as well as shallow cranking as well. I mean, there's times I'll use a 6'8 or 6'10 because I'm in tight spots trying to do a little roll cast and all that, and a 7-footer, seven 7'2 seven is just too long. So again, length of the rod plays a role. As far as the specs go on the rod, line rating, 10 to 20 pound test, and a quarter to one ounce as far as lure rating goes. Again, stay within those specs and you'll be pretty good. This one here is a medium heavy. Again, just because I'm looking for a rod that can load a little bit heavier lure, so the, the power rating may change, again, depending on the lure weight. You know, if I pick up a medium power, most likely it's going to load at a 3 16 maybe even an eighth, and it might max out at a 5 eighths. It just really depends on the weight that you want to toss. You know, the TCS rods that I use, I like those as well, but they load at 3 eighths. So if I'm going to throw anything below that, I need to use this rod right here, again, just because it loads a lighter. So again, just like anything else, pay attention to the specs on the rod, and you'll be good to go. But again, majority of the time, a seven foot rod for me is what works for all my type of cranking. Okay, next up, we have the Smithwick floater. Zero to two foot, four and a half inches, third ounce. Again, great bait to fish in the winter time, early spring, late fall. I know guys that fish them all year long, but me personally, I like them in the colder months. As far as the rod goes, pretty much the same deal as a cranking rod, but I go much shorter. Okay, what we have here is the Akuma EVX six foot eight, the medium power mod fast action tip on it. Okay, it's actually labeled top water jerkbait rod, 
Uh, line rating, 8 to 17 pound test. Lure rating, 8 to 3 quarter. Now, I do use this rod for top water and jerk baits. Now, I like to use mono line just because it's more versatile. Okay, I don't throw jerks that much, and I don't throw top water poppers that much. So having one combo that's more versatile for both is uh, more beneficial to me. So again, normally I throw anywhere from 12 to 14 pound test mono. Again, it's a floating line. Again, I can use it for my jerk baits because I'm mainly fishing shallow anyway, so I'm not really concerned about depth. And since it's a mono floating line, I can also use it for my poppers as well. But again, I like that shorter rod. It's basically a cranking rod. It's just shorter than normal. Uh, I like a shorter rod just because when you're working a jerk bait or a popper, you're using a downward motion and the rod's not too long to where you're smacking the water, smacking the bank, smacking the boat. Okay, last up we have, looks like a pack of soft plastics and a pack of hooks. These are the sticky hooks here from Stickies 4 out EWG. And we have the saw craw. The saw craw here. Which kind of looks like a kind of like a big rage craw, or like one of those lobsters. You guys can see that there. Good looking color as well. Okay, so here's a medium heavy fast. This is probably, I mean, I know I got about 80 rods behind me, but a medium heavy fast is the most versatile rod that I have. Just changing around pound test, type of line, I mean, it really makes the combos. Uh, more versatile. You can just do so much with this rod. Again, just little tweaks to your line, things like that. You can get much more out of a medium heavy fast. But this is one of my go-to rods here. You can just do so many different things with this rod. Now, the video that I'm going to link down below, I talk about when I would want to go to a heavy power, you know, with the same Texas rig. It all depends on, you know, fish that you're around as far as the size fish you're trying to target, cover, and things like that. Again, watch that video down below. I really go into depth in that video. But again, a good all-around Texas rig jig rod is going to be a medium heavy fast. Again, there's plenty of situations where you may want that heavy power, but for the most part, a medium heavy fast action rod is a good all-around rod for your soft plastics, you know, your Texas rigs, jigs, things like that. Again, a good all-around pound test that I like to use as well is 15 pound test. Seaguar and Vizx is a great choice, small diameter, so you can get away with using a little bit heavier pound test and still have the smaller diameter to be able to make a nice long cast. But um, I didn't really talk too much about reels. You know, six speed really is my go-to reel. You know, six, 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 eight, six, four, something in the six range. I can always speed it up. I can always slow it down. I know the benefits to having, you know, a slower gear ratio reel versus a real fast one. But again, the six speed right there in the middle, I feel I can just do um, more with them and be more versatile with that six speed versus having you know, an 8.1 or something like that on there. But again, I do know the benefits to having a faster or a slower. Use what works for you majority of the time. I do have a six speed on majority of my reels or majority of my rods. But again, medium heavy fast action rod is a great all around rod for your soft plastics and your jigs. All right, guys, that's all for the box here. Looks like we got the Dibble Digest in here as well as a sticker. But I tell you what, I do appreciate you guys hanging with me. It's been a longer video, I know. But again, give me some feedback down below if you like this style of video, just going over rods. And again, the boxes I'll get next month, we'll do this again. Hopefully, we get some different baits and you guys can get an idea of what rods work best for what. But if you guys are still here, I'm going to give you guys a little something. How about we do a pack of worms and a crankbait? The Vex and crankbait here, Riot, Probe. You guys leave a comment down below. We'll pick a random comment using a random comment picker. And one of you guys will win a couple baits. So again, I'm not going to title it giveaway. If you guys are still here and you leave a comment, uh, the giveaway is for you guys. I do appreciate all the support. You know, smash the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Again, make sure you leave a comment and you'll be entered in this little giveaway here. You guys are awesome. Thanks for watching. We will see you guys on the next one.